Okay, so now um, we are going to talk about a new feature that we added to our pattern move called pattern pin fastener. This is replacing uh, what it was currently our partial pin mythology. If I go over to this slide, if those of you that have used our pattern move, it had two pull downs, <clears throat> fixed fastener and floating fastener. However, the floating fastener actually under varied the possible variation that could occur if the pins were smaller than the holes. Um, so then in order to accommodate all the variation, uh, people were using a concept called the partial pin. The partial pin, if I jump over to, um, to the help file, nope, wrong one. Okay, we were calculating a pin diameter that we would simulate on one part that was undersized that would float the object part and the target part where the original pin would always fit through. <clears throat> and so you had to go through and use this uh, formula to calculate the uh, partial pin size. If I click over to the software, we have done a, uh, a, a very um, thorough webinar on the pattern move prior to this enhancement. And you can see this is the model that we used for the original webinar. And Ben will be sending you a fresh link to the original webinar. Um, and you can see in this original webinar, we have the partial pin move written. And what I'd like you to notice is you can see that there's this undersized hole or circle here, which that undersized circle is actually the partial pin. Okay, I am backing up and running. And so I did a uh, information, feature information, just to let you know that these pins are 10 millimeters. But in order to make, um, in order to make these, this part float over the pins and the pins float inside these holes, we would calculate a partial pin calculation and then we would use the fixed fastener formula. So you can see in this move, that uh, the partial pin is actually a diameter of six. And so if I build this, and we get in this view here, no, remember we're only focusing in on the holes with pins in them right now, and I hit deviate, you can see you know, that the pins are always inside the hole, and we're maxing out you know, the possible variation. So with that, what I want to focus on is we have this one measurement, which is the measurement between these two corners in this direction. So with the partial pin, let's go ahead and uh, run an analysis. And look at the measure Y. And you can see that my uh, estimated range is 9.81. Okay, so in what we've added now, we'll just remember that number. What we've added is now instead of having to do the partial pin formula, I'm going to toggle these. We have this new float. And if I go in here, now you can correctly just pick whole whole pin. And if I expand this, you can see my pins are 10. My holes are 14. So now, you know, we don't have fixed floating. We, you know, we called it fixed uh, float fit fastener. That's our old, you know, old method. And then float pin fastener, which on my end is, you know, the ASME floating fastener floating fastener routine. So now you have a new function here and uh, that basically will make the uh, partial pin obsolete. And if I go ahead and uh, I turned it on, right? Yeah, new float. I'm going to turn my mesh on because currently um, 
this does not move the physical pin, but if I do a nominal build, you can see it did move the mesh. And if I zoom in here and hit deviate, it's the same thing. If you just focus here, the pin is always inside the holes. <clears throat> and now we want to see with this uh, move on, if I do a nominal build and run an analysis, Okay. Oh yeah, 9.81, same number. Shoo, I was looking at that 4.7 and I got really nervous. So bottom line is we've added a new function to our pattern move so that you uh, can just say, hey, I gotta, I gotta line up these four holes. I gotta line up a pattern of holes to a pattern of holes with a pattern of pins. When you have to do that, then you're going to use the float pin fastener. 